They're ready for our next telecom leaders panel. Now in this panel, we're gonna have a, a couple of poignant areas. First is the value game, a leader's perspective on the structure of the industry, and the second is the changing role of the operator. Can the operating model keep up with the change? I'm gonna introduce all of the panelists and our moderator for the panel, and if you would please come up as I call your name. First, we've got Luigi Gambardella with Telcom Italia. Luigi. We have Hassan Kabani, CEO of Zain Saudi. We have Osman Sultan, CEO of Du. Joseph Ged, CEO of Uridu, Algeria. Ahmad Hanadeh, CEO of Zain Jordan. Khalifa Shamsi, Chief Digital Officer, Etisalat. And Marwan Hayek, CEO of Alpha. And our moderator is Ghassan Hasbani. Thank you, everyone. I'll turn it over to you, Ghassan. Well, hello again, ev everyone. It's a great pleasure to be, well, first of all, on this side of the discussion for a change. Uh, back asking the questions, which I hopefully would be an easier exercise than answering them. Um, and it's a pleasure to be with such a distinguished group of telecommunications industry leaders, uh, colleagues, and, and friends that we've worked together for, for many years now in this part of the world. On this stage today, ladies and gentlemen, we have the makers and shapers of this industry in this part of the world, which is actually shaping um, many other industries around it uh, as we evolve into new generations of economic models and of uh, geoeconomics in the Middle East region. For the next hour or so, we will be tackling the question of the value gain. Where is the value going? A perspective on the structure of the industry, what is being created, what is being destroyed, what is being shifted from one part of the value chain to the other part, and where the challenges lay ahead. And the second part of our discussion is going to be the changing role of the telecom operator. And can the operating model that we have today keep up with the changes that are happening on the technological side, on the social side, on the industry side, and the economic side? So let me start with the first kind of high level idea before we dive into these discussions and put the first question to the only person who's not actually from the region. However, he's been active yes. linking this region to Europe and the European experience to the extent that one of the countries one day will give him the nationality, I'm sure. <laughs> Let's see who, who does it first, though. <laughs> Luigi Gambardella, yeah. from your ethno Telecom. perspective, from your European perspective, what is happening today in the industry in Europe? Where do you see parallels that can be drawn to the Middle East? And any lessons learned that we can apply so that either Europe can follow or the Middle East can follow to be at par? Yes. I will give you the first couple of minutes yes. to start us off. Yes. First of all, Gassan, thanks a lot. It's really always a privilege and honor to be here. I like very much this region. And also, if I may say, I'm, I'm, I'm proud to have a lot of friends here. And this is very important. Let me, for one time, give you a good news. Because in the last, we met many times with you, and we had other occasion here to meet, and it has been extremely negative, right? But I have been negative or the situation? <laughs> on the situation of the European market. I, I would like to give you how, how I see uh, the, uh, in a few minutes what I think will happen and uh, the challenge that we have as European and how this could impact the region. Mm -hmm. uh, first, good news. I think I'm here referring to policy and regulation. The worst has passed in Europe. Uh, we expect uh, uh, completely with the new political leadership there will be a big, a big change in the, in, the, in the policy for telecom in Europe. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, what is important? 
for the first time, and you know this word how important it is, there is more ambition. Mm -hmm. The new leadership is mo has more ambition, has vision. If you don't have a vision, you, you cannot do, uh, go anywhere. <coughs> so the new le leadership has a clear vision. And what, what, uh, what we want to do, they clearly want to boost further the European market and to create progressively one single telecom and digital market in Europe. At the end, Europe is the, the, is the richest market in the world with, with more than half billion people. And this, uh, 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 with this single market, will bring what? Consolidation. Mm -hmm. We expect that uh, this will happen. We'll, we will have less and less operators uh, because what is needed today, as uh, Jules Farr was saying in this morning, is scale is very important for our industry. At the same time, we expect many changes in the, in the policy for level playing field. You know, I think you read today on the, on the Financial Times that the Parliament, some member of the Parliament, even they have asked a resolution to, for unbundling of Google, means there are, there are some politicians that are asking for to separate the engine of Google from the rest, from mm -hmm. the advertising. So just, just to let you know how the things are changing and how there is much more interest in order to change routes for level playing field. And last but not least, content uh, online should be available all over Europe without any restriction. Mm -hmm. But let me focus in particular on one point. I, in the last months, I met many investors in the world. I think that in the last, in the last few months, I met I, something like 100 top investors in the world for telecom. What has changed? They are looking very closely to Europe. They are ready to invest massively in Europe. If the new leadership confirm a new policy for the telecom sector in Europe, my, my expectation that we will see more investment in the European market. And this interest is from all over the world. I recently visited China and I met with my friend, the telecom operators, uh, internet players and high tech company and also obviously with Huawei. And I can see that the interest of, of for Europe is growing. And this is very important for us. Let me, uh, I think, uh, mm, say a few words on what are aspects that can, can, could have an impact on the region. First of all, let's be very clear. The pure mobile, at least in Europe, is dead. If you are only mobile, you will have problems. This is the good news. So it's good news for who, like <laughs> us, are integrated operator. And I think you should reflect on this, because I know that in this region there are many pure mobile operators. So and this will be a big change. Why? Because we cannot, we need to offer to our customer quadruple play. And today, to compete in Europe only as pure mobile will be more and more difficult. And we, you see already changes that are happening in Europe in this respect. Second point that I would like to uh, uh, raise again, scale. Now, this region uh, has some similarity with us, with Europe. This region is very fragmented. You have many countries, many operators, uh, and some of them are small. So maybe here I see two challenges, whether you should have an agenda for the region, whether you should start to consider, as we are doing in Europe, a regional policy for the sector, and taking in, in mind that maybe consolidation will happen also here uh, uh, in this region. Last point, sorry if I, I, I'm not very, but I try just because there are many things I, I cannot use too much time, is obviously the challenge of fiber. And here uh, you know how important is TV and this region has some similarity with some of our country in the south of Europe, like Italy or Greece. We don't have cable. And basically, uh, TV is TV and video service is the killer application for fiber. And therefore, I think this will be also a challenge Thank for you. the region as well. Very good. Well, you mentioned the fragmentation in the region. Um, and we were actually talking about the value game. And we have heard so far quite a lot about the importance of scale 
in this part of the world and everywhere in, in this industry. Um, I would like to put the question to Osman uh, on that particular topic. As the industry is reshaping and the value is shifting, and when we talk about single market operation, and you had one of those single market operations that are extremely successful in this part of the world, how do you see the future going forward if consolidation is not the way forward, if uh, footprint expansion is not a viable uh, or a kind of available option for pan-regional consolidation as we have seen in Europe, what is the way forward in the model and where will the value come from? This question that you are raising is, is vital for any one country operator and it leads to, if you allow me to rephrase it, in the world that is heading towards more digital, in the world that is heading towards uh, a lot of things becoming smarter, and the over-the-top play is, is happening. Will the fact of being a single country operator be a handicap? Or in another word, Will the fact of having multi-geography operator give an advantage vis-a-vis -vis this? Clearly, to phrase it bluntly, will we be disadvantaged vis-a-vis -vis Etisalat UAE in our market here because Etisalat have been very successful and are today uh, one of the most successful global players in this region? It's a fundamental question, and I wouldn't be doing my job if I don't uh, uh, study it and look at it, etc. Today, as we speak, we do not have evidence, and again, I want with a lot of humility to say, I don't think I have a zero or one answer. But today, there is no evidence in the world that in the transformation that telcos are living, multi-geography is an asset. If we look at the very successful examples, Korea Telecom, uh, Singtel, uh, PCCW, the people that are a little bit uh, going a, a, a step. No evidence that they are doing less or no evidence that the Telefonica or the Orange or the Vodafone of this world have done better on digital. And by the way, I believe that the road to digital telcos today did not completely crack how this works. There are companies that are doing this by creating uh, completely uh, spinning out models, others are, are doing. There is still a big uh, debate. The jury is still out in, in this type of discussion. So do you think in that, in that regard, almost necessity will be on the side of the single market operators to be more digital and find that as an avenue of growth than the urgency probably, that exists in larger operators? Probably, I'd like to think it, but let's read, uh, uh, Japanese have a word that is beautiful, reading the air. You know, when you just, uh, mm. let's read uh, uh, what's going on. We have seen the period of uh, global uh, players coming, the, what we call the OTT. They're there, they did really a great job. We're seeing the start of the conversation between the telco as such and these people. Luigi, you mentioned some of these now discussions. The government are stepping in because the entire ecosystem has to figure out some checks and, 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 and balances. In my opinion, and what we are seeing is that more and more urbanization is happening. More and more cities are competing as opposed. If you look today in what's going on in Europe, you will see that in that uh, uh, sense, this is the city of Barcelona, the city of Vienna, the city of London. All these are, uh, 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 this thing is happening. So these cities are becoming really, these technopoles are, are becoming. 
So localization, in my opinion, is going to become very important. The next uh, discussion is the think globally, act locally, because you still have these big global capabilities. How you can localize this in order to have, because this is going to touch uh, little things that all of us individuals are doing in our day-to-day -day life. So uh, mm. this is a debate. Of course, as a telco one uh, market uh, uh, telco, and probably, you know, by the way, the largest, one of the largest, uh, to be clear, the fourth largest in the Arab world if I take a one market telco. Mm. So we have reached that stage where we need to think what's happening. I mean, basically, okay. you're talking mm. STC, Etisalat, UAE, Mobile, and then do in terms, if we, if we talk, so people maybe don't know these. So we are in this thing, uh, in, in this stage. Uh, we believe that we need to keep uh, uh, an edge by as well going out of, uh, uh, out of, uh, of necessity. Now, I want to comment on what Luigi said because I think it's a very interesting, interesting thing. Uh, Luigi, I, I agree with you and the good news that you give. I do believe <laughs> when uh, the physical infrastructure is, if we think that, you know, some headline, mm -hmm. uh, connectivity, uh, uh, being connected, becoming a basic human right which is the case, touching everything people do, individual, industries, etc. The presentation that uh, uh, our, our colleague from Hawaii brilliantly structured well. What about the physical infrastructure? Are we, so physical infrastructure moving to a utility, I see this. A lot of people will not like mm. this. A government stepping at even supra-government stepping at global level, because when we see, uh, think of this becoming more and more something as mainstream, yes, uh, uh, protecting or regulating the authentication, protecting and regulating the uh, uh, access management, who can access what data. If the ecosystem builds itself, these layers, and in my opinion, these <coughs> government will become more and more global layers of building the ecosystem. This will happen. When? I don't know. Hmm. This is. Uh, in this region, probably okay. it will be accelerated. No, that's a different debate. Very well. Let me let me move to the taking a point from uh, from Hassan. Uh, Hassan Kabani, you're leading uh, Zain in uh, Saudi Arabia. You are part of an international group, yes. uh, yet you're operating in the Saudi market pretty much in a localized manner. How much of the value do you see now being uh, distributed? between operators at a global scale, so how much the scale is helping you out, versus how much the scope do you see as a future potential and an input into your growth uh, strategy? Well, uh, first of all, uh, I would like, maybe it's important that we look at the last five, six years when we were starting to see the changes taking place in our industry. And I still remember in uh, meetings like this, we were like talking about OTT are coming, they yes. are eating from our lunch. Yes. And, and if we look today at operator situation, we will see that we are no longer talking about OTT eating from our lunch. We are talking about operators running behind uh, uh, the OTT trying to capture part of the value that OTT are, yes. are creating. So we were seeing that our business model is changing, and I can confirm that it happened. And I believe as operator, we didn't do much in order to uh, adjust uh, ourselves or our model to the change. Hmm. Now, uh, what's happening today is that we are in a situation where it's like you have a, a car or a taxi and someone is riding with you, uh, uh, is having a free ride and is not happy about the speed or the size of your car and he's asking for more and why you are late in developing. Your revenue is 
going down is under pressure. All our revenue, I believe, is uh, under pressure. Yes, we are seeing huge increase in data traffic and revenue from data, but it's not yet being monetized, as mentioned in the morning, not being monetized enough to compensate mm. the decline. And we all know this. Now, the question is... So, but you, you're going and building a high-speed train. Exactly. This is, <laughs> exactly. This is where I want yeah. to reach, is that will we, as operator on the physical capex and, and infrastructure, will be able to continue doing this while our revenue is under pressure and we need to build more? The, the issue is that when we talk about OTT participating to this, we are not talking about only CapEx uh, uh, being built by the operator. Behind the CapEx, we have many other things. We have license that we paid for. We are paying for revenue sharing with the authorities and with the government. Uh, and you know, no one is taking this into consideration that we contribute to an ecosystem, whereas we are having competition that is not coming from the same uh, that is not starting from the same ground. Yeah. So, uh, in a way, uh, now we are in this situation. Yes, I believe that the old model is dying. Mm -hmm. uh, it will not, it's not sustainable. We need to have, we need a better regulations. Mm -hmm. We need to continue doing what we need to do in developing our infrastructure and enable our users to access uh, the content provided by the OTT and others. Uh, but we need also to keep the balance for this ecosystem uh, to work for all. OK. And allow me to then move to Ahmad Hanandi from Zain, again in Jordan. That's a different angle at looking at a large group in the region, but smaller operation. Uh, so you're practically also operating locally within the Jordanian market. From that perspective, and Hassan touched upon regulations, which is quite an important issue. Do you see that telecom operators are effectively being held back by regulations whilst being attacked or competed with from all angles by OTT, by digitizing industries, etc., from a non-regulated or unregulated uh, angle? How much of a challenge do you see this and how much of an opportunity? Thank you very much for the question. Uh, uh, being in Jordan and, and, as you said, in a very small market that's facing economical challenges on all levels, where everybody in the market is under pressure uh, from the government on the economical side to the private sector on the gross side uh, to the purchase power that is declining in the country. But to be honest, what we see is uh, uh, the, the uh, of course, I'll say the, the magic word that everybody is saying in telecom, which is the transformation that we are living today, and we are living the transformation, and we are, we are convinced that we are living that. For me, I put it in, in a more simple manner, and, um, and I believe the online world is becoming, or the, the technology is becoming part of the lifestyle. The online world, what, what we used to call it when we were kids, a virtual world, it was like a dream for us. It's becoming real now. Uh, it's a world that is forming, it's becoming so real. You can trade, you can socialize, you can uh, learn, you can uh, get the training. Okay, so that world is, is being, uh, uh, is maturing and the, the speed of the maturity is, is too high and we need to catch mm -hmm. up with that. Now as telecom operator, we need to decide. In the real world, we are part of the infrastructure. We built, we are, we're similar with the, in, in the real world, you need roads, you need hospitals, you need uh, schools, universities. Uh, on the virtual world, you need internet. <clears throat> you need data connectivity. Okay, you need high speed and high capacity. As telecom operator, okay, in the real world, we know our role. On the online, what are we going to do? The highway to the online, where people go and there we disconnect with them and we leave them for the OTT and uh, for the content providers and the, uh, the, the, the online uh, world itself? Or shall we build an infrastructure over there? So in, in Jordan, this is what, what worries us the most, to be honest. You know, where are we going to be uh, in the future? And mm -hmm. there is a story I always 
like to, to talk about it. My, my son is nine years old. So when I fight with his mother uh, or argue over something, argue, argue. okay, uh, 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 and we disagree. Or okay. discuss something. <laughs> or discuss, yeah, no, we, we disagree on, a, share, on share. the scientific theory or whatever. Share. You're toning it down so, uh, gradually. <laughs> he'll immediately <laughs> come up, okay, and say, why don't you Google it and finish it off? Yes. Okay, so stop arguing and yeah. just find the information on Google. Yeah. And one time I was at the dentist, and when I finished, he said, I want to eat. I said, let's go and eat at McDonald's. He said, no, there is a chicken restaurant in this building. I want to eat in this restaurant. I said, how do you know? No, there is a chicken restaurant over here. He said, I checked it online, and there is a restaurant down there. The review is 4.5, which means they have a good food. And let's go and try it. <laughs> okay. I never knew that there is a chicken restaurant in this place. Okay. okay. And it's a local chain, which I never heard about. Mm. Okay, but immediately he went to an application. He found this is the generation we're waiting for. Yeah. This is, this is the generation we need to serve in the future. That generation is so demanding. That generation is not willing to connect only to internet to watch a video on the YouTube or to okay. uh, 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 read the online news and the rumors on the online news. Okay. This generation wants a lifestyle. And are you, as telecom operators, what are you doing as telecom operators today, seriously, to address that challenge? And I'd like to address that question to Khalifa Shamsi from Etisalat, who is in charge of doing exactly that. So how do you see, or where do you see, the success factors for a telecom operator to actually play exactly that game and survive in it? And is the business model ready for that and the operating model ready for that? You must be facing all these opportunities at the same time facing all these challenges, being part of a traditional operation, building a new entity and growing into a new area, coming from the kind of bread and butter state of the operation. So let's start by um, flashing forward to the future. And let's zoom into the revenue mix of a telecom operator. How does it look today? And what do we think it's going to look like tomorrow? I think a lot of us will agree that the mix of our voice, our data, and additional revenue that might be coming out of the what's so-called digital services, the internet of things and machine to machine, that mix will change. I think everybody in the room without taking a single vote will agree that the in five years from now, the portion of the voice component will go down. Everybody in the room will agree that the data revenue will multiple for a lot of the operations. You might have a debate on which operator and which country will have a growing portion of what's so-called digital revenue down, down the road. So I think we're all not the same. Not all countries are the same. Not all operators are the same. I mean, when you grow up, a lot of people were asking mothers and fathers, what do you want your child to become or what the child want to become when they grow up? And a lot of people said doctors. Well, guess what? All your children, children will not going to be doctors. All your operators are not going to be digital pioneers. Some operators will be probably disappear. Some operators will probably stick to the core uh, services of a great telecom utility like, and others will continue in innovating itself and transforming itself and bringing itself, leveraging on scale. I mean, I think going back to what Uthman mentioned, I mean, allow me, uh, Mr. Uthman, to say I think it's more of wishful thinking that single, a single operator in one country will have a better chance in the future to be a digital pioneer comparing to a good example of a telecom group that will allow to utilize scale. Scale is scale is ma mattering in the situation because it matters in the purchase power. It matters in uh, partnership with the uh, so many players, whether telecom players or internet player. And it matters also in talent because this region specifically lacks a lot of talent. I mean, globally, a lot of the new topics we're talking about from the areas of big data, internet of things, the machine to machine, the digital commerce, the digital... Uh, entertainment and so on, there's a lack of talent. So if you can get some talent and utilize it in multiple operations, multiple country, that will allow you to leverage uh, faster implementation in one country comparing to the other country. So in Itisalat, we are awakening to the fact that 
opportunities are high. Mm. We should be able to do more. We have the right to earn more out of this digitization era of our industry and the industry that we're ser serving, the countries that we're operating in. But it will not happen on its own. Mm -hmm. I haven't been in this industry as much as some of the gentlemen here. I've been here for 22 years. But during my 22 years, I've seen only exciting things happening to this industry. But maybe in the past, we were operating more of a model that is a, a push model to, yeah. the, uh, to the clients of yeah. services that we have. Mm. Now we have to shine more to allow for more of, more of a pull model from our governments, from our cities, from our industry, whether it's a bank or a retail, to see a value of what we have. So what we're trying to do is focusing on certain areas of the, uh, of the digital revolution. We're starting from one angle from the typical natural evolution of a telecom. So telecom, natural evolution goes toward infrastructure. So in certain areas like the B2B, it's a natural evolution of a telecom player to focus on data centers, yeah. to focus on cloud, because this is a natural. And when we surveyed some of our operations to the enterprise market, who do you think will be your data center and cloud provider? They all, I mean, a big percentage of it say we expect you to, and this was a few years ago, we expect yeah. you to develop your capabilities to service us. Natural evolution when it comes to connectivity to human, connectivity to machines, are a natural evolution of a uh, telecom operator. But then take that natural evolution from connectivity, from SIMs to platforms to application. So what we're trying to do in the Tasarat group, focusing on this area, we are not a lab. Yeah. We are not a manufacturer. Mm. Our main objective is really to accelerate the rollout of such innovation in our own market. So the local operation in his own local market will be able to deploy such services in a faster approach leveraging on the strategic view that we have of a certain industries, okay. of a certain areas, bringing the right partnership, products, and strategy in order to but accelerate can, that. Can, and on that note, I'd like to move to Marwan uh, to, to, uh, to ask him from his perspective. Marwan, do you believe that telecom operators can move at the right pace to achieve this kind of position while this evolution is important, operators have been used to longer cycles of evolution in relative terms to either OTT players or internet players or application players. Do you believe that this space can still be occupied by telecom operators or should they be doing what they do best, which is enhancing infrastructure capabilities while kind of plugging into these areas? Before uh, addressing your question, Hassan, I would like just to, uh, to mention one thing. Uh, I don't know why every time we talk about... Uh, the microphone is not working. Yeah. No. Can you check if it's green? Hello? Uh, let me put the same question to Joseph while yeah, no, the microphone no, keep is him, Keep him, keep him, keep him. <laughs> 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 no, no one, no one wants to answer it. <laughs> no, I was just saying that uh, before addressing your question, Hassan, okay. uh, one thing that I want to share with you, I don't know why every time we talk about uh, small operators or operators that will be, be disappearing soon, I have the impression that everyone is looking at me. <laughs> uh, no, uh, I'm, smaller, I'm smaller than you in terms of size. So then the question becomes, does size matter? Uh, so I guess in this industry, uh, we have a lot of examples that have shown that size does not really matter. And most of the successful uh, ideas uh, have been developed by small and tiny organizations. So this goes back to your question. Uh, are we in a position today as uh, telco operators uh, with the size we have to innovate uh, in a faster way, to have the agility that is needed to really uh, overcome and, and compete against people like the OTT players? Uh, the, the answer from my angle is a straight no. Uh, we are not equipped to do so. Uh, we could have done this if we were in a startup phase which is, which is not the case of uh, lo lots of us uh, here in this room. Most of us have, have grown up, and I think the smallest organization we talk about today in a mobile environment is not no less than 1,000 employees in one organization in one country, which is heavy and bulky in terms of organization to make a decision uh, fast enough uh, to respond to a competitive uh, idea that is thrown by, uh, by people we don't know uh, where they sit uh, on the cloud somewhere. 
So uh, from my perspective and our perspective as, uh, you know, uh, I would say mobile operators, the, the answer should be no, we are not. And then again, uh, we go back to the same question, should we focus on building and enhancing our capabilities, which is the, the one thing we can do uh, best and most, which is uh, building the infrastructure. And this is really what we are good at today. And we have shown, and it has shown that it can yield positive return. And we have seen today in today's uh, presentation by uh, Tisala that it is yielding revenue growth year on year. Uh, I guess most of it is coming from traditional uh, yeah. business that we do. It's not really yeah. uh, the digital space that we are aspiring to, uh, to occupy in the, in the future. Now, Joseph, you're looking, I, I kind of left you till the end because I wanted to close the loop. We went around the region here and you're sitting on the west That's end. The, fastest. <laughs> the, further one. The, the furthest point in the region towards the west. Uh, you're kind of a gateway or a bridge between the Arab speaking world and Europe. You're sitting in that kind of unique position. And you're looking at all the challenges that are happening both in Europe and in the region vis-a-vis -vis infrastructure, scale on one side, and OTT and, and, and value uh, services. And many people look at the telecoms industry and they envy you. They say, look, hang on, you're still enjoying wonderful margins. You're still pretty much a protected industry. Most of these companies and operators in the region still have government backing behind them. And they are well entrenched in their markets. So they're quite comfortable. You look at the OTT players, poor guys, they're selling stuff for free, almost. They're not making the margins. They're probably banking on an exit value, on a multiple because of the advertising value that their users may bring them. Looking at this perspective from your point of view, are we nagging too much and overinflating the threat from OTT players in order to protect our really comfortable space? Are we becoming complacent? just protectionists, or it is a seriously real threat from your view? So many, so many questions. In yes, one. that will start the next round of discussions. <laughs> OK. Uh, first of all, uh, let me go back 22 years ago, as my friend from Etisalat mentioned. 22 years ago. 22 years ago, uh, there was a big thing. I will not you know, say the word transformation has been used so many times. The big thing in, the, in North America was we're going to go from AMPS to TDMA. We're mm -hmm. going to go from analog to digital. And during that big thing, there was the creation of, of data. Data started by just going into, into digital. The speeds at that time were 9.6 kilobit to 14.4. I remember my boss had these curves where the data market, global data revenue would cross voice in like three years. That was from 92 to 95, uh, from 92 to 95. I, know, I remember that three or six months after, he was, he was fired. And the whole group has been restructured. Today, let's look, how did we all spend? Some of us spent 15, some of us 25. Some, but how did we spend the last 22 or so 25 years in our industry? We spent them in the you know, regular, conventional, uh, conventional competition. We spend them in doing business by starting from technology driven. Engineers have been leading companies, the mobile operators. The state of the art technology was the most important factor in any, in any business. Then we moved into being more commercial aspect. Then we have to have efficiency. Then we go into profitability. We moved into so many stages. Then we had, you know, the, the breakup of, uh, of the different, you know, the, the, uh, the AT&T or, or the Bella, the Bell companies, and then moving all this industry, moving into having more competition, more than one competitor, the incumbent, so on and so forth. Two to three to four licenses per geography. We have been going into cost efficiency. We have been going into all of this. We have been doing business plan and our business strategy have been using an underlying fundamentals that are conventional in today's world. So we were going over profitability. We were defining the geography, number of licenses, territory. We know the operators. We know each other. Uh, you know, we know our, our strength and, and, and weaknesses. And we have building our businesses and moving forward. Some of us went global. They said, now I have 
competition in, in, in my home country, I have to go out. Some of us continue to run forward by having not organic growth, by doing investment and showing nice, nice, nice growth because there is investor behind and so on. I don't want to uh, be boring here. The thing is today, 22 years ago, if you look today, we clearly see and we tr truly believe that over the next three to five years, okay, most of us may not be here. The faces might change, companies might disappear, and this is becoming a reality. This is not just fiction as it was 22 years ago. The reasons are many, you know them, development of technology, development of smartphones, yeah. the, the, the OTT and all the application created and all that stuff. The most important thing for me is that the geography, even, even if we go global, we've been thinking locally, we've been thinking how we're going to be competing in X country, Y country, and how we're going to be consolidating at the global level, at the GOP level. The geography fell apart. The boundaries are broken. No more boundaries today. No more licenses today. You don't need a license to operate in a, in a country X. You don't need any authorization. If you talk about the OTT, you don't need all that stuff. To answer your question, your son, we keep on nagging. I think yes, because I go back to what Etisalat mentioned today and what we all know. We were able to monetize on voice for 50% of the traffic for the last years, and we're not able to monetize more than 5%. And for me, the question, the big question is why? Mm -hmm. Now that's why, let yeah, just, yeah. why is it's in our, under our control? Yeah. We have been competing in, 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 in each geography on voice, bringing the margin solo. And we have been co uh, competing with, with my friend Hassan. He was the, the leader. In, the, in that market, and he was the price leader. He was going one third down, 33% on, on the tariff, just to, to maintain the leadership. That's in his previous uh, yes. Yes. thing. We have been yeah, thinking. can do that now. <laughs> we, have, we have been thinking that the world, the geography, the market is limited to us. Yeah. Guess what? We broke down the margin so, so, so far on voice that some other you know, external competitors came in. And now we're doing the same on data. Okay, Luigi, you have a couple of points on this one. Yes, I, I would like uh, to... Uh, very briefly. Yes, very briefly. I think that uh, I think we have in front of us a very serious challenge and maybe also threat. And we should be aware of this because the most important thing is not to lose our customers. We already saw so with Apple SIM. Okay, today is done in this way, tomorrow they could sell traffic by passing us. Yes. They are, they there could be application on my mobile. I could have an application. I don't need a telecom operator anymore. But you so need it to connect your mobile. The SIM. Yeah, is but, the but, same. But, but, but they can buy wholesale traffic and they sell. Because the customer doesn't care anymore who is providing the service. Yes. So I think we have in front of us, this is a really a serious, a serious threat. And this will happen. So therefore, quadruple play services are very important because customer maybe we can offer TV, we can offer broadband, mobile yeah. broadband, we can yeah. offer. But this, this will happen. And another important area where we have to, to work more is big data, obviously, yeah. and, and, and other protection. But it's really, uh, this is really a challenge because I, I recently went to the city and I met some of our friends there. And when they say, Luigi, we are an internet company. I said, what, what does it mean? They have the customers in their hands. So this, our major challenge as telecom operators, we have to keep our customers. And we have to find a way, because otherwise, we will lose the customers. But we will lose the customers. So, and this, this is a challenge that we yes. have in front of us. And on that, on that point, yeah. we, are the, we have the balance between net neutrality, okay, where we believe net neutrality, there's a consensus that is causing certain challenges uh, to telecom operators. There's a growing dominance of the OTT players. Very recently, uh, for those who haven't heard, YouTube is, has announced that they will be starting a subscription service for music. And they have placed pressure on music producers. They would either take them down from YouTube or they would pay 
to be on YouTube. So that's a dominance uh, being exercised on a specific market. And the kind of music producers accepted that. And YouTube will be charging them for the downloads uh, that happen over uh, its, um, its network, basically. Can this model then be applied to telecom operators? Are telecom operators in a position to do that today with YouTube or with any other OTT player or content provider? I would like to put that point to you, Osman. Would you see one day this net kind of uh, revenue or value sharing between uh, content providers, OTTs, and operators actually happening? And do operators have enough clout and courage to actually do that? They or should could. they do that? Should they do that? The other question. Yes, they should, certainly. Okay. They could if, as I said, some definition of a new ecosystem or rules of a new ecosystem are agreed. When the rules of roaming were agreed because a supra entity <coughs> defined how all operators will deal with roaming, it was working. It was efficient. When a player like Apple for launching the iPhone started a very disruptive business model of revenue sharing, mm. and some operators accepted and others, there was a threat. Yeah. If all operators said, no, I mean, we're already, uh, they're already eating the lunch, and I think we're far beyond just the eating the lunch. So if a new agreement on what should be the end game of the system, because now we're looking, Apple has just brought a SIM card in their iPads, uh, uh, Google is defining a new model, all these are if we but sorry Osman, are they eating the lunch or just throwing the food from your plate? That's kind of the question I think I think they finished eating part of the lunch. The <laughs> question the is rest. are they going to sleep in the bedroom or not? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you want they <laughs> occupy <laughs> I think the <laughs> but, <laughs> but to stop here uh, oh, no. Yes, I, 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 I do believe. And you know, and by the way, I don't see it out of, oh, this is evil because they're doing. Yeah. There was a situation, and you're very right, as I've said, we were all of us busy because we were doing what we know how to do. And by the way, I'm not minimizing what the industry did. This, you know, mobility that was driven by the industry is a great achievement in the history of, of mankind. And it happened, and a lot of companies, a lot of value was created. But we are used to work in a certain pattern. Yeah. You said, uh, are they more agile because we have slow cycles? It's not because only we have slow cycles. It's because we have too much pressure. The pressure of having such a p and and a balance sheet that my shareholders will look completely differently if I tell them. I have a great idea. I want to create, you know, a system like, and I start investing and building uh, customers to get, so one day I hope to be sold for 19 billion to a Facebook. It will not pass the first gate. Immediately when the revenue will not come, well, what are you doing? Un exactly. This is a different, completely different ecosystem. When you have players that are not asked by their shareholders after hundreds of millions, we have lived what we know how to do. We charge access. Uh, not 22 years ago. Uh, but even today. Zep, close to 32 <laughs> years ago. Malish on the other part. Close to 32 years ago, exactly. Mm. Osman, let me, let me break the, the flow of, of this discussion for a second because we're coming back to this very important point a bit later. Let me put a different type of question and go around the panel very quickly with the type of yes and no uh, answer. And I'm going to put you on the spot here because this is a topic that when I was sitting in your seats uh, not so long ago, uh, I kind of uh, felt, and we all avoided discuss discussing to a large extent, but it's a very, very important topic for emerging markets, particularly 
for this part of the world. We all know that most of you operate in companies that have to pay a revenue share, a hefty revenue share, to the government of the country where it operates. Okay? This is not the case in Europe, not even the case in Asia, not even the case in most of the world. We're talking about OTT eating from our plate, reducing margins, causing threats. What do you think is a more immediate threat to your financial results, to your operation vis-a-vis -vis your shareholders, and to your impact on the local economy where you're operating? And I'm going to put that question very clearly and very simply. Yes or no? Is it the OTT? It's not even yes or no. It's either this or that. Is it the OTT threat? Or is it the hefty or the whatever it is, revenue share, that you have to pay from your top line before you start counting? From now until the next 24 months, which one is the higher priority? And I won't put the question to you because you're not suffering but, from this. But, I'll come back to you to close on this may, one. May I say yeah. something on Netflix in Europe because I think it's very interesting what has happened in Europe. Okay. Yeah, but we'll, we'll get to that on Netflix. <laughs> Let me start with Hassan. Do you believe this is a more immediate challenge for you or the OTT is a more immediate challenge for you? Hassan, uh, no, it's, uh, yes it's or this no? or that, yeah. Lafim, I have to go through it. That, uh, <laughs> it's, it's difficult to, to answer like this. Simply, I want you please to imagine five years from now we are sitting in this room, hopefully, mm. and operators will not exist. Okay, we will be attending this event. Mm. Okay. I want you to imagine this world where no operators Please bring the vendors to this panel and let them talk about their world without operators. Then vendors will be suffering and they will be talking about OTT eating their lunch because there is no operator anymore. Later, please bring, after five years, bring the regulator to this panel and they will be like OTT are doing lots of activities economically and they are not participating to the economical development. It's an issue. Then you will have an issue of employment. You will have lots of problems. So it's a complete ecosystem that needs to work and needs to be protected. We all need each other. I cannot live without the OTT personally, not as operator, as an individual. I need their service. I need their content. But their content as a digital world is not enough for me. I need also the physical world. I need customer service. I need billing. I need. Uh, shops, when I have a problem, so I we, need to we, go we to need someone. That, we you know, need that like for the development of the economy, for the ecosystem, for exactly. the continuity of exactly. all of these services. It is needed. The yes. question is today, if we were to advise decision makers and policy makers today, let's be very clear about it. For the next two years, what is the highest threat on your business? Is it and you're describing OTT as almost like an opportunity today. Is the highest threat an OTT in coming into the market and eroding the margins and eroding the revenues? Or is it the tax that you're actually paying from your top line, which is equivalent to a major shareholding at the bottom line? In my opinion, OTT are opportunity. Okay. Remember when we started the first layer, the fix, Mobile was like, oh, mobile is killing the fixed business, and some of uh, people yeah. working in the telecom were not. So now we're facing the same. Exactly. So then we saw mobile taking over a new layer and created lots of opportunities. So you, you're for supportive all of, of keeping the revenue share of governments going forward, or is this something that yes, needs to be reviewed? Yes, I don't mind of this, but I want this to be applied as well on the OTT. We need to sit all together. We need to share, we need to understand each other, we need to help each other. They, they, the customer needs their content. We, we will enable uh, the infrastructure to, for okay. input and output from, okay. from so the So you're, you're saying there's no, no, no worries about the revenue share from the government as long as governments regulate OTTs for and the everyone. Yes. For everyone, but you know, we know that locally a government cannot regulate uh, you know, uh, globally. 
So these are two separate things. But I will put the same question to Osman. Let's go very quickly through this. But the question is, what is your biggest immediate challenge today OTT for the regional operators? The OTT or the revenue share OTT. on the bottom line? OTT. Uh, OTT, but let me just uh, explain. Very good. Very good. <laughs> I, think, I think here between the two is basically uh -huh. OTT, but the biggest risk, I see the operators them, themselves. Uh -huh. The biggest okay. risk for our industry is like if we didn't have OTT, we would have created OTT, we would have created application. Let's assume we, we don't have OTT. Let's, let's, let's go back to the days where we have been, we had the closed networks and we have been negotiating revenue share with the vast providers. We have all, we have, all of us have been negotiating for maybe weeks and months the percentage of revenue, 40, 60, 50, 50, 80, 20. We never thought about the revenue itself. So if no, I get... This is not the revenue share I'm talking about. I'm I talking know. about the share that the government, the government takes from yes, the top line. I'm yet, yes, yes, but I'm talking about the OTT thing, yeah. like the risk on, of, the, of the OTT. Between the OTT risk and the government risk, we are more... I would say we feel more comfortable with the government risk because it's very clear, it's very, we know exactly what it is, and we can forecast it. The well, OTT, I, we cannot. I would put the question to Marwan, but 100% of his revenues go to the government. Uh, <laughs> Marwan is 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 From your point of view, at the Salat's point of view, I, I don't think it's the OTT or the government. I think I'm going back to operator, but the operator doing their own price destruction and price burning. If you look uh -huh. at the last 24 months, look at the market. Saudi Arabia, again, there is a lot of market destruction that's not because of OTT, because, because the operators the themselves are doing that. And that's by far multiples than what the, the OTT have done uh, to us. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to fix our basis before we complain about the outside. Uh, Ahmed? Uh, to be honest, I see this is an unfair question because uh, if you ask me, none of them, as far as Jordan is concerned. Any, I cannot compare. If you want me to compare between OTT and taxation system. Not the taxation, I, the revenue share system of government. And for us, we look at it all in all. Ta yeah. any, the taxation system yeah. made the OTT a very small problem and challenge for us because yes. that is a bigger challenge. Exactly. You know, we okay. pay so much. Uh -huh. So, but. For a telecom operator, you ask a telecom operator, your biggest challenge is OTT or the revenue sharing, I believe you are underestimating the challenges that we have because it's none of them. No, it's, I'm talking... It's no, our no, future no, role no, and the overall no. ecosystem. Yeah, but the question okay. is not what's your biggest challenge. It's which one is more immediate for you? To be honest, looking at the future, in the, looking years. into the future, uh, it's, it's creating our own opportunities and being and playing a major role in the mm -hmm. ecosystem. This is our bigger challenge. And Osman, you had something to add to this? Yes, and uh, if, because we're giving why. I think the main threat is keeping the relation with the customer. And I believe that moving in this direction, mm -hmm. no, OTT, we're used to the field of constraints with yeah. governments, we're used to tactically uh, move the cursor. Mm. The real disruption, if we lose the relation with customers, and yeah. if you ask the question, is there a risk that they come and make you lose the relation? My answer is yes, there is. Yes. This is why clearly yeah. I said simply OTT. Yeah. Luigi? I mean, yes, I think here, let's be very, let's make a distinction between the results, the economic results, and the value of our companies. Because it's not important what we did yesterday or we are doing today. It's important what we'll do tomorrow. I make an example. If tomorrow morning the European institution change the regulation for fiber in Europe or other infrastructure, the value of the telecom operators in Europe could double. Could double overnight. Yeah. Because the expectation will change completely. And this independently from the, the, the discussion with the over the top. Now, in Europe, we have to focus on the substance because we have lost too much time in, in for other things. Now, we need a different regulation for five. If this happens, the, the shares of telecom operators in Europe will, will jump because the value is important. We have here a very important company like IT Salad. We saw the numbers. We saw the customer. There are small new Uber. What is the value of Uber today? It's very similar to the value of IT Salad. Let's, let's be very, so the, pro the problem is, yeah. now, what, 
what investors want. What do we have to do? Uncertainty. We don't like uncertainty and complexity. This, this is very important. And what is the risk of the region vis-a-vis -vis with taxation? No one likes that overnight you change the rules. So this, is, this is very important, and the government has to understand it. They cannot change rules overnight, and they cannot introduce taxation overnight, because otherwise investors will abandon the region. But I, I want to say something, uh, one word, a few words about uh, net neutrality and Netflix, because one thing is the policy, the discussion, and I would like to tell you what's happening in Europe, but we, maybe we don't have enough time. But the other thing is the, rea the, the reality. The reality is Netflix in Europe, uh, European operators are queuing outside the door of Netflix. Why? Because we need them. Because we are competing, most of them, of us, with cable operators. And we have to be able to compete with cable operators that they are very strong in the content. And as I said, some operators are queuing outside, outside the door. I, br I brought in Brussels this, uh, the founder of Netflix. And he has been very busy meeting everybody. Because everybody wants to have Netflix in mm. its own, in, in, on a platform. So that's, but I, I agree, uh, and I said the same, I fully agree. The major threat is that we will lose customers. Because the only thing internet company wants how does it work, agreement with Netflix? The customer is of Netflix. It's not our customer. The customer has to subscribe with Netflix. Okay. That's the system. And the point is, tomorrow morning, Netflix could sell capacity. Not only movie, but will sell also capacity. So we have to be ready for such kind of challenge. So right now, just to sum it up, we have the shareholder challenge that is uh, a value creation for the company itself. We have the market challenge, which is a value co creation for the economy. We have a value shift between OTT players destroying value for telecom operators and taking away customer relationship. We have operators queuing to get handsets from uh, Apple to get uh, Netflix uh, content, queuing to get some changes to regulations to improve their margins, queuing to get equipment, queuing, queuing, queuing. Yet it doesn't seem from this discussion that anyone is queuing to come to the telecom operators for any value add except the basic utility infrastructure. Is this because operators haven't been able to transform their operating model and their structure to deal with all of these eventualities around the world, pushing themselves back into a utility model? Or is it because of the shareholders, of the investors in the telecoms industry, who are not really willing to channel their cash through telecom operators to invest in these opportunities, and they would love to go and do it directly. Therefore, they're holding their hands from doing it this way. Osman, what do you think? Yes. Yes, for which one? Because the operators have not been yeah. able to yeah. do this. And let's take a few. I, I said, we as an industry, and I'm saying the telco industry, did a great thing. But when you think that what really was the tsunami in what we see, talking about social networking, something like social networking, which is basically a capability, a simple capability of connecting people with each other, right? Shouldn't this be the essence of our business? It didn't come from telco. It came completely out of telco. We have a DNA. The transformation of this DNA is not easy. The way it, because the DNA started with infrastructure. Mm. Absolutely. <coughs> and why people are not queuing around, yes, you're right. We queue all operators, you know, with in front of an Apple to get the latest handset. We will queue with the main, we will queue with the YouTube of this world, etc. Because it seems that there is a, a perception that our main asset, which is the infrastructure, is common and granted and given to, to anyone. And some people, you know, some people in, in the public and the large audience think that it shouldn't even cost. So this paradox mm. at some point, the end game, some rules and checks and balance has to happen in this ecosystem. So They're not here to Mar 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 Marwan, can, can, can you then shed a light a little bit on how can this rigid infrastructure, these organizations that are built 
to develop, you know, 3G, 4G, rollout, base stations and connectivity, and on the fixed line to put DSL in the ground and fiber, to build and, and dig in the ground. And these kind of rigid infrastructure-based operations, how can they be turned into companies that can innovate, that can deal with the Internet of Things, that can put e-health in their service, that can uh, create out-of-the-box uh, thinking, partnerships, etc.? You're in an operation that has many limitations around what it can do, yet you're working on these kind of innovation streams. How can this rigid model be turned into an agile, innovative model? And I will come also back to you on this one. Well, I think the, uh, the answer is we, we, as mobile operators, we have to move from the traditional technology-centric approach to become really an end-to-end -end cloud player, I would say, which is focusing more on, on services. In the, larger, uh, in the larger ecosystem we are in today, our infrastructure, infrastructure can serve as a cloud for uh, third parties, for developers who can develop applications to run on it. So by opening up and, and partnering, partnering with third parties and exposing our capabilities, starting from APIs to billing to charging to our distribution channels, etc., we can team up with third parties that would uh, make us look like a cloud for, for them and really benefit from the investment, the heavy investment we have put on infrastructure. So this larger ecosystem will, will, will play a role uh, of an enabler to the larger economy and other sectors yes. of the economy like education, health, etc. So we all know about this. So I guess this is where the focus should be and this is how the transformation can be done uh, without really uh, uh, being affected by the, by the heavy weight yeah. that we carry today in terms of mobile okay. operators. Let me break from me asking the question and audience. move to the audience. There's a question Maybe here. Audience. I'll come back to you. Uh, we just need the microphone. Uh, microphone over there. There's one next to you somewhere. Coming up. I have one question here, another one next to it, and then I'll come back to you, gentlemen, there. Okay, thank you. Question. Thank you, Hassan. Let's uh, state the affiliation and then the question. Yeah, Karim Tiger from Arthur Little. Gentlemen, it was a pleasure listening to you. Uh, I think one of the assumptions some of you are making is about consolidation of infrastructure going forward, right? We've been talking about that. I just want to highlight perhaps something that Luigi knows very well in Europe, which is consolidation comes at a very, very high price. What do I mean with this? When the, cons when the uh, European Commission accepted after one year of discussion in Austria that Hutchison acquires Orange, number three, down to three operators only, the price of a gigabyte of wholesale access was $2 and less than one cent. We're talking about half cent per minute. So what's happening now? You have a, a row of players queuing, so to say, all kind of players accessing that. And these sourcing costs are lower than the production costs of the incumbent and T-Mobile. What I'm trying to say here is that there is a huge risk that new players come to the market and directly offer services, including the access yeah. to the customer. I'm talking about banks. I'm talking about utilities. To, give, to highlight what it means, we started last year working with the lottery in Czech Republic. 6,000 point of sales they have. When we started, the business plan was based on 16 MVNOs. When they launched, Guess how many after a few months? 80 players, 80 MVNOs launched service in Czech Republic now. We're talking about all kinds of companies, utilities again, banks, yeah. you name them. So this is a huge risk. And if you add what Hassan said before, Amazon dealing with one player globally, providing service end to end, Netflix is the next one, yeah. right? What will be your role in the future? So coming back, to the question you mentioned before, there is no option for you. If you stay in the infrastructure and the market going forward will be consolidated, you will have access of your infrastructure to anyone. And if you're not in the game of service interfacing with the customers, as Osman said before, you will not survive. You will have 60, 70, 100. In uh, Germany, you have more than 100 players. Think about it. Thank you, Karim. There was also another intervention here. Okay, question. We'll, we'll take yeah, a bunch of uh, questions from and then we'll uh, respond. OK, very good morning, and thank you, Hassan. I will start just with the three uh, main Sorry, facts. Your affiliation, where are you uh, from? Yusuf Mtawa from Zain Jordan. I, I will start with three main facts. Fact number one, we all know that revenues were declining even before OTTs. This is number one. 
Number two, we know all that OTTs cannot work without operators. Operators can work without OTTs. Fact number three, today operators revenues out of data is reaching 20%. 50% of data is YouTube, so 10% of your revenues are generated because of YouTube. 5% because of Facebook. 1% to 2% because of WhatsApp. So I do believe OTTs give us the chance as operators to come out from the declining shape to the U shape and to come back again to, to, to bridge our revenues back. But I do Thank believe you. operators failed to price data the right way, number one. And I do believe as well, regulators help operators to fail in pricing data. So the issue is not uh, with OTTs. And OTTs are not really making any threat. On the, on the contrary, they're making the opportunity, opportunity for us to do so. Thank you very much. Point Another point, point yeah. what, we, sorry, what we failed no, on no, as no. well, we were not able to adopt the OTT model in monetizing our database. It's yes. a lot. They have 150 million customers. Us as Zane, we have almost 50 million customers. Till the moment, we have almost zero revenues out of monetizing the database in the same model OTTs they have. Yeah. So the failure, I do believe it, and it's in the pricing of data gigabyte price and in how to monetize the base that we have. Clear. Uh, uh, mirroring the yeah. same model. Thank you very much. There was a point from the middle there. Definitely. Ricardo Tavares from Techpolis. Uh, let's be frank among ourselves here. Telecom operators would not have invented the internet. They will want to charge by clicking or by minute. There will be no internet. We're moving from the time you know you would move the plug from here to here in the switch a call to the world of IP. And this is this is not our our world. It will be, but it's not. Yeah. So I think it was very interesting when uh, Gambardella mentioned the the role of Netflix in Europe. Netflix is the biggest bandwidth eater in the world. But in Europe, the operators are interested in it. So are we moving towards selective views of OTTs instead of general statements about the problems of OTTs? We're seeing not only in Europe, in Africa, the zero rate, Facebook, which makes the case of the OTTs, which is there is only consumption of data when our content is there. Thank you very much. Point from the front, if you can pass on the microphone. Please, can you send up? Yeah. Hi. Najib uh, Habib from MT2. Uh, we work uh, in the middle between operators and OTTs, and we do billing, and we do also content. And they squeeze you from both sides, basically. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, no, he's eating from here, he's eating from there. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't, uh, don't go with it. Yeah, this is what they say. Actually, <laughs> I'm just wondering. So the, the question is that we, we've, we've heard the problems, a lot of problems. We, we, we would like to hear about some solutions. And I think the, Mr. Jufar this morning said this. They don't have like a career directions uh, a group like Etisalat, but they're trying a lot of models. Uh, we also, there are facts also in the ground that uh, operators are trying to uh, invest in their own. I mean, they want to do their own OTTs, they want to do their own technology. Uh, uh, I mean, it is a lot of ventures, SCC ventures, uh, I don't know, other ventures and adjacent ventures, and they have done uh, like 15, 20. Uh, investments in similar uh, Facebook, local Facebook, regional Facebook, Net Netflix uh, regional, and so on. Would that be the solution? And also we heard like Etisalat also has invested in their own technology arm, as far as you know, this uh, technologia word. So to do their own um, applications and, and technologies and, 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 and so on. So okay. would that be the solution? Uh, or a way out, or is it like uh, uh, rounding the corners and, and trying to uh, uh, get me, some more revenue let streams? Let me try to get some reactions from, uh, from uh, the panel on the three. Just to summarize, we're talking about consolidation being uh, a costly uh, thing that could, could, could um, uh, you know, drive you into the OTT play ultimately. Uh, operators can work without OTT, we heard that. Uh, and the OTT 
uh, gave us a new opportunity. Uh, so, Luigi, can I have a kind of 30 yes. second respond very quickly from, yeah. and then I'll come yes, to uh, I would like to make Ahmed. my comment that this. I think the, me the major fail has been this. Can the we have mic a microphone? Mic, uh, maybe mic, it's mic, mic uh, there. downwards. Okay. You can hear me? Yeah, they can hear okay. me. Okay. I think the major, the major challenge for us has been this. We need to turn it. We, our company, we, we make revenue, right? And we believe that it's important to have revenue. This internet company, many of them, they don't have any revenue, but they have value. So we have we are a company with revenue but little value, and this company have little revenue and a big value. Now we have an expression in Italian. I don't know if you have here. Follow the money. Where is the money? Is data. The rules of data. Why this company have such kind of value? Because they can use data. And uh, what, is the, the, what they have, their assets, are not infrastructure, data. If we change the data, the, the, the privacy rules, and the data protection, we can change the value. And this is something, also at political level, we have to understand. And this is very important. And, and a second thing, if I may, I give you an advice. I, you don't need my advice, but I would like to give in any case, is this. Because this region is very important. Try, try also all together to set up your own agenda and let's try to influence at political level not only one country but the region. You have to raise this, this issue at political level, at the regional level and not at the national level because at national yeah. level you will not go anywhere and maybe we should work more closely together also with Europe. Khalifa, Europeans. what's your reaction to... to no, my reaction is I agree uh, on the point uh, made in the middle. There is no such thing as OTT and you a single direction. When we said in uh, Salat, we don't have a single direction. It's not a single strategy for all. Because there is no such thing as OTTs. OTTs are not even the company. There is no single strategy toward Google. Because even with Google, there are a lot of different products, solutions. So for some, you want to promote. You want to, you know. And for some, you want to probably compete with them on. So in this day and age, I think your brain power and the computing power of your head has to be a lot faster. It's not you have to really analyze what you want to do. And, and it's not like a single, single and constant strategy. You'll have to evolve. Maybe tomorrow, yesterday, some, uh, somebody wanted to promote WhatsApp. OK, if WhatsApp add voice capability, what are you going to do? Yeah. If the network evolve, if the, operate, if, the, uh, if the business model evolve. So the main thing for operator right now, you cannot sit still. You cannot be that fat, rich guy sitting in a chair and do nothing. You have to be agile and, and so evolve, move forward. For different OTTs, some of them you have to uh, promote the, their services, combine them, but you yeah. have to also know what is your assets okay. in that relationship. Well, since we're talking what about va this. What value that you have to add? Very good. Since we're talking about this, I've been trying to kind of play the role of the OTT in the asking in the question, since we don't have them here represented. Uh, unfortunately, they were not able to make it earlier. <coughs> However, we have a little surprise in the audience. Okay. We have the head of Google in the Middle East uh, who has raised his hands to say a word. He's sitting right in the middle of Hamad Imran. Hi, everyone. Hi. Sorry I couldn't make it earlier, but uh, I have a specific question, actually. Um, so in my current role, I have the luxury of working with many industries. And, and I also had the luxury to work very closely with the telcos before I joined Google. And you know, one of the things that's very common is everyone's talking about their, their digital strategy. Okay, so many companies are, are having a chief digital officer or, or something like that and coming up with a strategy that is really beyond product development. Okay, it really uh, touches all their value chain. But the, the first thing that they think about is selling online, okay, is e-commerce. And if you look at e-commerce in, in globally for telcos, you see that you know, in the UK and the US and, and, and most of Europe, 30 to 40% of transactions are happening online for telcos, while in the region, it's still relatively non-existent. Okay? Yeah. And you know, we speak to telcos. You know, I have my colleague here, Shadbel, today. We're speaking to everyone about e-commerce, but we haven't seen any serious strides in this area. Uh, and it's a bit surprising to me, because we've been talking about the role of the OTTs and 
you know, how do we really compete and so on. And the basic thing of e-commerce is not really picking up. So what I would like to know your perspective on this. Well, that's a touche, I think, for the telecoms industry. Can we have a reaction? Basically, it's why why are operators not even doing the basics of online while they're trying to take on the OTT players? They're not even selling enough of their own stuff online. Uh, any views on that? Would you like to comment it's, on that? It's, it's a difficult ramp up. Mm. And as I said, and I repeat, we're not very good. We're not the best for doing this because it has to be changes and you know, moving in this digital journey, it's not something that comes naturally for telcos. And the presentation this morning, when our friend from Hawaii mentioned the transformation that they're going, and even on the, he said it didn't come as an easy thing to do. We are in this process, uh, selling our own services online is ramping up. I'm not saying uh, this is optimal, because as I said, we're not very good at that. We have to learn, and we have we have to do it. That's a very yes, candid question. Can you react to this? Let me have let me have a different view on that, and then I will I will I mean I will close by by basically answering you. I think that uh, basically the simple question for me it's a very simple economic fundamental. You know why the traffic? I mean OTT. Let's consider the OTT. The OTTs are basically partners. With the, with the telcos. So everybody is, is developing this overall market. Let's, let's see it as basically one global market. So from the economic perspective, we see that new players are driving new traffic, more traffic. So things should be, should be fine. The question is why we are not being able to make money from that. So I go back to the value destruction of the operators in their own local market. Now, the other, the other reason is not just to blame the telcos. We are, you asked previous question, Hassan. We, are, uh, we have different shareholders, as Osman mentioned. We, have, we cannot compete in our business model. We are not, we're, not, we're not saying OTTs are extraterrestrial. I'm happy that the gentleman from Google, he was on the telco before, and now he's, he's on Google. We have guidelines, we have instructions from our shareholders that you have to make money. We cannot invest in a business that, does, that has zero revenue. So how can we compete economically with the, with the business model that has zero revenue? And then it sells based on the valuation for 19 billion with 60, 60, 60 plus employees. The, the, uh, the other third, third element that is very important is the, re is, is the regulation. We are, uh, we are under very severe regulation while the OTTs have zero. Now, is anyone from us, any telco, was able to raise his prices for voice, for data, for services over the years? Do we adjust our prices for inflation? Are, aren't we going down on the packages or on, 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 on price per minute or price per, per megabyte? Aren't we going down year over year? So on a unitary margin, unitary cost and margins, we are going down. Assuming that we're going to go up on total, on total value then we, have, we are under very restricted environment on the regulatory side. Now, I will go back to what you mentioned earlier on the net mm. neutrality. Net neutrality, OK, each one has his own position. Some telcos would say, well, this is good, this is bad. At the end of the day, we are all, it's driven by constitutional rights. It's driven by non-discriminatory. And it's driven by freedom of, of access and freedom of, of, okay. of whatever. Now, when this happens, it's going to be worse even, right? Because who's going to be picking the tab? The question is not on network neutrality. It's on the regulation that, that would follow. So you know, the ruling against the, uh, like the FCC has been very clear, that you cannot basically regulate the broadband mobile. So, but you, they will have the ability or the, the, the right to go and follow on the profitability and the, for, for basically broadband. So this goes again that the ISPs and the CSPs and the OTTs and all this space cannot be declared as, as utility-like operators. Yeah. So now the question is, who's going to be picking the tab? In this whole environment, I'll just close in like one minute. Very simple. I think the best environment is not the walled garden, have the negotiation one by one with the OTT. What do we do? Let's open it up. Let's, yeah. let's go for the full-fledged yeah. thing. The only thing, let's go back and do two things on the mobile side. 
mobile operators. Let's go and lobby with the regulatory for like to influence government policies. How are they going to be making money from that environment? Because if the cost and the margins will be squeezing us, only us, because we are three players here now. We have the OTTs, we have us, and we have the customer, right? So it's like three tier. Who's going to be picking up the tab for the investment and the margins and the, and the profitability? If we're going to continue picking, up, picking this up, we're going to go down, and the whole ecosystem will go down because everything relies on infrastructure. Because your, your shareholders may abandon you at some point. Exactly. But before we get there, I mean, or after they, like they, they abandon the management, the business will, will basically collapse. No, I mean, the, the industry, not the management. Yes, not the management. So basically, <laughs> well, basically the, point, <laughs> the point is, <laughs> let's do two things. Let's go back and make sure yeah. that we don't sell data yeah. below cost. The OTTs are driving traffic. Let's price it properly. So let's go back and lobby to increase or to change or to, el to eliminate unlimited or to price the Some kind of rebalancing Because the of key yeah. is in our hand. And the second point, at the end, it goes back to the regulation. The regulation today has to change. The regulation today is done ex ante regulation. You want to do an offer, you have to submit it. They go over a very basic stuff. We look into the termination cost for voice for six months d during the year, and the value is shifting. Voice is basically going into, into data. Regulation has to move because the sector is opening up. We're no more in a very defined environment. So it's going into a more like, like a competition council or anti-competition council, where regulation has to move from, from the okay. ex ante to the ex post, ex post control and not regulation. So uh, let me come back to Khalifa to, to also yes. react to this. Answering uh, Mr. Point Murad. Uh, about online presence. Yes, and online, so uh, I agree. I mean, did the telecom operator Kirby played a bigger role in flourishing the e-commerce business of the MENA region? Absolutely, yes. No excuses behind that. I mean, there, there could be a lot bigger role that the telecom operator have played, but it has not been moving so fast. Now, what do we do as a telecom operator? Despite that we have launched our online services and payment for our own services more than 10 years ago in the internet days and now in the app days but could it even be in bigger portion of the overall activity of course yes but as Osman said it's in the increase but it's not even to the aspiration of the users uh, contribution to the e-commerce I mean I'm uh, very happy and glad to say that myself and uh, Mr. Murad we have a very close collaboration between the Salat and Google for enabling Google to reach out for the, our customer for paying for content of Google app stores online through their mobile phones of Etasalat. So is this a collaboration with an OTT? You bet it is. You know what I mean? It's a win-win situ situation yeah. among ourselves. Now we can enable this to more players? Of course we can. Can we collaborate with more? No. This is what I'm saying. You have to pick and choose where do you bond with each other and where you keep a distance and where you probably you know, punch each other for some of the activities. Okay. Very that good, Osman. To what Joseph said and building on this. I think we haven't done, when working with the OTT, to come back to what Mohammed uh, was saying. There are areas where, in our hands, we were too busy looking at how I'm looking to this guy in my domestic market, the other operators, and not looking how, as an industry, we can move together. Two areas that are fundamental, mm. that could have, you mentioned one, mobile advertising. Scale will matter a lot in mobile advertising. Together, in regions, if let's suppose, if we have created whatever platform ecosystem to come to this, we could have played together with the Google yeah. and Facebook, or we will be able tomorrow to play together with them. We didn't do it because we could not go beyond the rivalries that we had won. The second thing, direct operator billing. If we have, as well here, if we have done it quickly enough, we could have become the platform for all e-commerce and m-commerce, just for the billing and the transactional part. These are two simple examples where today shift in revenue has been happening, where we could have years ago an opportunity to be there, create some kind of joint, whatever. I don't know how the model would be and the governance, but some kind of platforms, all of us, 
imagine the power of uh, this platform where all, let's say, operators in the Arab world will talk to all these big brands, like Google can do it, like the, uh, talk to these big brands and say, oh, you want a campaign to do it in the GCC, you want it in North Africa, you want it in this country, I can give you. And then leveraging a little bit more on the data and on the assets that we have that we're not leveraging. We missed this opportunity. You said it okay. because we were rivalries, internal rivalries. And Hassan, any reactions on this to close? Yes, uh, uh, again, I believe we need to be to sit together and work more together. I strongly believe in what uh, Osman was saying. We need as well as operator to have together. a common uh, front and a common platform for certain services. Uh, the question that was raised or the point was raised, I would also like to share experience with the audience uh, because we, on daily basis, we have uh, negotiation and uh, uh, agreement to be signed with OTT uh, players. And I would like to ask, uh, will OTT be willing to uh, take in their contract bad debt? Uh, are they willing to take in their contract uh, revenue sharing for the government? They don't like to hear about this. Mm. This is not their business. This is not, they want the net of the net of the net of what we are uh, uh, creating. And uh, we are to take all the, uh, uh, to suffer from all the uh, uh, headache, if I may say, from mm. the market and from what you can get with the, uh, with the local context you have. So. It's, the relation is not balanced. It needs to be improved for that relation to be sustainable. And Thank you. Well, basically, just to wrap up, I'm quite aware of time and that we're standing between you all and, and lunch, and there's plenty to go on in this discussion. But basically, we've heard that the kind of digital journey is not a simple process. The model is not geared up yet of telecom operators to take on the entirety of the challenge. OTT is a bigger concern than the straight revenue share of governance. We, we heard that from the operators here. Uh, the shareholders are pushing for returns, so they may not choose telecom operators as a channel to invest in digital plays, but they might go straight to the digital players if telecom operators fail to evolve their business model. Uh, heavy local regulations on telcos and OTT have uh, you know, OTT on the other hand have a free hand as opposed to heavy regulations. Data pricing needs to be rebalanced in one way so that we're not actually burning our own value while there is a free lunch to be eaten by consumers on the other side. We have a collaboration that is needed to be done which was an opportunity missed but not too late for it between uh, OTT and players instead of straightforward competition and this collaboration collaboration can be selective it doesn't have to be a one model uh, fits uh, all and should, we should be going beyond the rivalry of the two parts of the industry and accept the fact that they need to coexist and finally all the risks are being as Hassan said being pushed on the telcos from a revenue share perspective, from an infrastructure investment perspective, uh, from a taxation perspective, etc. Uh, some of that risk needs to be shared by newcomers to, to this space so that telecom operators do not end up going back into receivership of governance, governments and into utilities that simply serve a infrastructure in the ground or in the air. At this point in time, I would like to ask you to join me in thanking our distinguished panelists, the CEOs and leaders of this Thank industry in the region for their contributions and thoughts. And I'm sure this conversation will continue over time. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Hassan.